After I wrote my first book, The Beatles A Celebration, which was an international sort of bestseller, uh, which was a hell of a surprise to me as I'd never written a book before and was uh, serially out of work living in Toronto with two little kids and a wife, my life changed. And of course, you know, when you have something successful, they come to you and say, what do you want to do next, man? And uh, I had been sent to Liverpool to the Adelphi Hotel, where once a year they have a Beatles convention. Fair enough, it's Liverpool, home of the Beatles. And I met there a woman who was John Lennon's maternal half-sister called Julia Baird, who was an extremely educated uh, French teacher of all things, and much younger than John, but certainly was there when the Beatles were formed, and she was maybe, I don't know, 11 or 12 when he got famous and went away. They never li really lived together because uh, the two half-sisters, Julia, with whom I wrote the book, and Jackie, with whom I did not, um, didn't live with John. John lived with his auntie Mimi and Walton, and they lived up the street um, with their mother, Julia, who, of course, John wrote the song, famous and wonderful song, Julia, from the, the White Album. Of course, uh, John uh, didn't live with the, the two sisters. He lived in Walton Village on Menlove Avenue with his auntie Mimi, and uh, the girls lived with their mother, Julia, about whom John wrote the really wonderful and touching song, Julia, uh, from the White Album. So I met this woman, and she was a school teacher, and uh, I approached her about doing a book. No, 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 I couldn't possibly exploit uh, the fact that I'm, you know, my familial relation with John Lennon. But uh, I said, hey, look, I think we went to a coffee bar or something. You know, your mother's been portrayed really badly uh, in so many biographies of the Beatles, even as a kind of a, excuse me, whore. Uh, so is that the stereotype uh, of your mother that you want perpetuated throughout history as the Beatles are a historic band? This will go on long after you're dead and people are going to think ill of your mother? Why don't you use this opportunity to straighten things out and talk to, tell the world who your mother was and who John was and what their relationship was and how important that relationship was the formation of the, of the Beatles as it was Julia, the mum, who introduced John to playing the banjo, even though it didn't have all the strings on it, and also uh, played him his first Elvis record. You know, and they used to dance around the house. So she was very important, and he loved her very much. And of course, she died when John was like 18 in a, a tragic car accident where she was run over by a car uh, when leaving from a visit to John and Mimi. Now, it took a lot of convincing, but finally I did. And I knew that if I were to go to the publishers and say, look, I got John Lennon's sister. What do you mean? John Lennon doesn't have a sister because there'd been no publicity about this for a long time. Ever. Sorry, a long time. Never. No publicity. I knew that if I took this to the publishers, there'd be great interest, as no one was really aware that John even had any sisters. Um, so I took it to my agent, Carolyn Brunton, in London, and she sold it all around the world. Many editions, American, French, I think Swedish, I don't know, I don't know all these other languages. And there was like 14 editions. Initially, although we had interest, it wasn't spectacular until I had an idea. I said, why don't you write Paul McCartney a letter? Hi, I'm John's sister. You remember me from when we were kids and the Beatles used to practice in my mom's bathroom to hear the echo on the tiles. Why don't, uh, would you please be good enough to write a little introduction? And Paul, just, and they just sent it to his office. Now imagine how many letters Paul McCartney gets. 
but this one was somehow not thrown out or put into the fan mail and his secretary gave it to Paul and he said oh yeah this is for real and he called her up and they got in touch they're great friends now but the long story short he wrote an introduction it was the tiniest of introductions not really very it must have taken you know just a few minutes but because we ha now had introduction by Paul McCartney that we could put on the front cover fucking sales went crazy around the world with publishers and they all bought it it's been in I think 14 languages, as I said. So it made a lot of money. So I, 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 the way I work with celebrities is I sit them down with a tape recorder and we start it bef before they're born even and right up until now. And I get their whole life on a tape, as I did with Ginger Baker of Cream. What an asshole. But anyway, good drummer, but asshole. So anyway... Um, even though he's very unwell and maybe dead by the time you see this, uh, he wasn't a pleasant person. All right, so, or even honest. Julie and I, Julia and I went through her whole life on tape, and that takes weeks. Then I would take those tapes back to America. I would go through those tapes, and I would put together a first draft. Well, I did that, and it was uh, accepted all around the world and published, and it was a, a great success. And she came over to America, we had a contract, these are sort of little things, but they piss you off, you know, that we would only promote together, because I knew they just want hers, because I'm no relation to John Lennon. But So we did a promotion of Larry King and this and that, and we went around America, and it was, uh, it was okay. Now, at the end of the day, I have a bone to pick with Mrs. Baird, in that, after we wrote this book, of which we own the copyright 50-50, which means she couldn't do anything or I couldn't do anything without the other's permission. 50-50 is never a good idea. It's like uh, things are locked. So what, what happened there was that she wrote another book, which was essentially this book, because I had a lawyer in New York look compare both books. And they were almost virtually identical. Some she would disagree. But the reason this is important is that there was a movie made called Nowhere Boy from the content of the second book, which, from my point of view, was really the first book, just reworded and a few other bits thrown in. And by contract, I should have gotten 50% of the proceeds of Nowhere Boy, but I got nothing because it was based on this second book. All right? Well... Um, I was going to sue, but, you know, life's too short for that shit. But now I can extract just a little revenge by telling you this story. Um, and I wouldn't mention it, except that I had this high-class literary lawyer, like, read both books at a time, page by page, and it was like, he said the same book. Anyway, fuck it, life's too short, I let it go. But um, this book, now, unlike the other whatever, however many I wrote, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this book. I'm probably going to write a book about John Lennon's childhood using a lot of the source information. And by the way, there is one thing I found of interest, and not to be critical of Mrs. Baird, is that she knew fuck all about the Beatles and didn't have that much connection with John as a child. She was a lot younger. So I... Uh, I filled in most of this. I got the research. We went to see, there was one good aspect, is that um, I got to see members of the family that no one had ever interviewed before, like Dr. Leela Harvey and Norman Birch. And I got to really, and cousins and things. So I got, and John was close to all these people right up to the day he died. So uh, that, was, that was an interesting insight I had into his childhood. So not sure exactly what I'm going to do. I won't be publishing this book as is because I can't. Um, so I may have to take the route of Mrs. Baird and reword or redo a book about the... Uh, early life and childhood and formative years of John Lennon, which I certainly will do. It's going to take a little longer. Don't hold your breath, but it'll be there at iconeditions.net. So, uh, thanks very much for listening, and uh, see you on the flip side.